out how good of an editing software Final Cut Pro Guys. is. Guys! Hats are in. No way. Bring him over. Oh, so <laughs> excited. Oh my gosh. Is that yours? Forever. Jeez, oh, they look so good. Man, they did a great job. I don't know why they sent two, though. Like, both hats. Obviously, we're going to sell the flat brim. That's a really dumb joke. Obviously, we're going with the dad hats, because they will sell a lot better. I wear a flat brim hat in, like, every video we've ever recorded. It's basically half our brand now. Who wears flat brims anymore? Dad hats are in right now. First of all, I wear flat brim hats. Second of all, dad hats were kind of in last season. And third of all, this is a really convenient time for you to start caring about fashion all oh. of a sudden. Oh, okay, I see how it is. Well, at least I'm not the one that spends $100 just to feed their hat to their dog. Come on. First of all, $75 without tax. Second of all, I don't know how we got it. And third of all, too soon, man. Dude, in every video that I've recorded, I'm wearing my dad hat. Yeah, like what, three of them? No, it was like five. You know what? I'll cut you a deal. We'll sell both kinds of hats. If I sell more, you have to watch all three God's Not Dead movies in a row, one sitting, marathon style. You know what? I'll take your bet. But if I have to do that, you have to do something as equally bad, okay? All right. If I win and I sell more dad hats, you have to, for a whole week, take all of Black Bar's designs and turn the font to Comic Sans. You know what? I'm gonna win. Yeah, Deal. we'll see. I'm gonna win. Have fun designing on Comic Sans. Nick, Caleb, where did you guys go? Oh my gosh, we still have more things to talk about. Why does this always happen? Purchase hats like these at blk.var slash store. We took a long time in trying to make these hats as high quality as possible. So you know that we're not going to give you something that we wouldn't be proud wearing ourselves. And of course, buy the dad hat. We have made a lot of sermon series promo videos in our day. Some of them really funny, some of them super serious, some have really high production value, and others are laughably simple. But what I want to talk about today is what makes a really good one, and spoiler alert, it's not the camera, it's not the budget, and it's certainly not the lead time. Welcome to Black Bar. Thanks so much for the Patreons who helped make this video possible. If you want to learn how to support the channel, check out the link in the description below. Hi, I'm Caleb, and if we're going to talk about what makes a good sermon series promo, we need to talk about why we make sermon series promos. This type of thing can absolutely fall into the category of it's just kind of what you do whenever your pastor is ready to start a new series. We rarely think about the motivation behind promoting these things. Now, your first instinct might be to say that we make promos to get more people in the door, maybe to make sure our regular attenders don't miss whatever it is that's coming up. Sure, but on average, most church attenders these days are coming for the community and for the worship more than anything. Not that the sermon isn't important, it obviously is. But in general, the exact subject matter that's being preached about has little weight on whether or not people show up on Sunday. Regular attenders are gonna be regular attenders. They're coming whether you're preaching on Genesis or Revelation, all's the same to them. Now, is it possible that someone attends your church strictly because they're interested in the topic that's being preached about? Sure, absolutely is but most of the time it's probably not. Deciding whether or not you're gonna visit a new church is a complex decision and boiling all the factors that contribute to that idea down to the exact passage that's being read on Sunday is misguided at best and probably reductive at worst. So if there's better ways to promote your Sunday morning services to the general public and to your congregation, what's the point of these promos? I, I promise there is one. This is not a trap. This isn't one of those, your video announcements are bad and you should feel bad type of videos. I'd like to propose that the best use of your sermon series promo video is to set expectations. I've heard from more than my fair share of pastors and preachers about the importance of expectations. People get what they expect out of a service. If they expect to encounter God on a new level, they're more likely to. If people don't think they're gonna get anything, they almost certainly won't. 
mindset is incredibly important when assessing what and how you should communicate with your congregation. The expectations of your audience are a massive factor in the difference between a powerful, life-changing service and just another Sunday. The opportunity that we have as church media professionals is to set expectations, to prime people with the ideas and the feelings and the questions that can help them better understand and process the themes being presented on Sunday morning. Have you ever thought about what an honor that is? How important that is? The voice that we have, although not entirely present on Sunday morning, has a super important part to play in the effectiveness of the service. That's why we should be making and working hard on sermon promo videos. Sermon promo videos help us get our congregation's gears turning days or weeks before we start hitting the gas. If you can get someone to think about the grudges that they've been holding onto over the past couple months, the days leading up to a sermon, how much more likely are they going to be responsive to a message on the importance of forgiveness? Maybe a video making fun of the silly things people fight over can prep someone to be open to a sermon on loving your neighbor, even though they might have drastically different opinions than you on what sports team they like, their favorite color, or which of the two dumpster fires they voted for a couple weeks ago. Side note, if most of y'all campaign for Christ like you did for your candidates, I imagine the world would be a whole lot better place for everyone. <coughs> Sorry, we have a video to get through. We're gonna run through a couple sermon series videos that Nick and I have worked on over our time here and our thought process behind what we were hoping to get our congregation to be thinking about prior to the sermons. The first sermon series promo we're talking about here is a sermon series called B. It focuses on the Beatitudes and being careful of the kind of messaging we're bringing into our minds every day. Let's check it out. We are born into this world not knowing what to do, who we are. Our parents teach us how to walk and to talk, to eat and create. They teach us to say please and thank you and to stand up straight. We go to school and are taught how to read and to write. We make friends and we learn how to play and to fight. We are taught what is cool and what is not. We are told not to question what we are taught. We are told how to love and what to dream. We are told that things aren't always what they seem. They tell us where to work and what to make. They tell us how to vote and who to hate. They tell us to be loved by all and to resent those who won't. They tell us to be rich, to be pretty, and to hate ourselves when we aren't. They tell us to be proud, to be violent, to be popular, to be indulgent, to be sedated, to be arrogant, to be entitled, to be complacent. They try to tell us who to be, but instead, That was a fun one to shoot. Uh, it was actually inspired entirely by like a song that I heard uh, on some random secular album and it like it all clicked together and really happy with how that one came out. You can tell that we spent a lot of time focusing on kind of the messaging that's coming on. We really wanted people to think about what it is that they're intaking all the time. And you probably can tell if you're familiar with general pop culture when it was that that went live, the kind of things that were in the video that uh, the people were watching. But we wanted to take that message and really contrast it as hard as we can with what the Bible says we should be and the importance of the Beatitudes. And I think it did a really good job of setting people up emotionally for what it is we were going to be processing through in the weeks coming ahead. And our pastor loved it and so did the congregation. So I think, I think we were effective with that one. All right, the next video we're gonna be showing is a series we did called How to Wreck Your Life. Now, the thing you should know about this series is that it was intentionally done to be entirely sarcastic. The pastors would get up on the stage and tell you exactly everything you should do if your 
your goal is to destroy your entire life. It was super abrasive and intense and honestly hilarious and one of the most memorable sermon series that we've had. But it required us letting our congregation know uh, as best we could what it was that we're gonna be talking about and the attitude that we're gonna be taking. This video is also an excellent example of why you don't need super high production value to get a point across. Take a look. Do you have too much money? Your marriage too happy? Do you generally find fulfillment in your life? Hey, Billy Swift here with an exciting new product for you and your family. How to Wreck Your Life. A scientifically proven six step process to make sure everyone around you hates you. Included in the VHS tape are lessons on your marriage, your finances, your attitude, your faith, your church, addictions, and so much more. Have too much time on your hands? Try picking up a new addiction. Tired of people always being around you? Well, treat them like garbage and watch these people fade away. Wow! Lessons like this and so much more viewable in beautiful VHS quality. Any problem, big or small, these lessons will start them all. Learn these life-wrecking lessons for six Sundays, starting in January at Grand Rapids First. Part of me is a little bit mortified <laughs> that we're sharing this video on Black Bar, but it was intentionally made to be low production value, which is kind of an example of how low production value actually takes a lot of effort in a lot of cases. Like when Billy Swift is raising his hands at different portions of the video and like the names are coming up in completely different sections of the screen. It was a lot of effort, but we're happy with how it came out. The video ended up being very successful in prepping people for the very sarcastic sermon series that was to come. It was definitely one of the most memorable series that I can remember here. And although some people still definitely struggled with the tone, I think the video did a really good job of setting up what people were supposed to be expecting expecting, which is what our idea is, uh, from the beginning. The last one's a bit of an interesting one. Our pastor preached on end times and specifically the rapture. And it was a very interesting message targeted specifically towards people who missed the rapture. And the Assemblies of God is pre-trib. I don't care if you're pre-trib or you're post-trib or you're mid-trib or you're no-trib. This is not the time for this sort of conversation. I want to show you the video that we created because I think it does an excellent job, probably the best job of what we've done at getting people to feel an emotion that sets them up for the sermon series that's going to be delivered. Sorry if you heard any ladders there, they're doing some cleaning outside. A Little bit of warning on this one, it's a little bit intense. If you don't wanna experience that, just skip ahead to this time afterwards. All right. on the interstate today has been congested. We'll have more on that story later. We want to transition to a developing story that is happening right now. Reports are coming in of missing persons. The scope so of the Minister's trip was cut short this morning and after unconfirmed Dad, are you going to I, I don't know. Dad, everyone's just gone. I've been seeing this for years. Where they all go? That one's a little bit intense, as you can see. Uh, obviously, we spent a good amount of time in After Effects on that one, and a lot of work uh, doing audio, a lot of different recordings, but um, couldn't be happier with the end result. And immediately after, the first time that video was played on Sunday morning, smack dab in the middle of, of the service, our pastor did an impromptu call to salvation. And over the course of the two services, 14 people got saved straight after that video. So if anybody tells you that media has no place in actual ministry, they're wrong. 
<laughs> I don't know if there's a video that we've done for an upcoming sermon series that more effectively gets people to feel and to think and to really focus on the topic of the message like that one did. And yes, obviously we had some production value, we spent some good time on it, but the point of this video that we really want to get across is what the goal of sermon series promo videos are. Can they get more people in the building? Yes, absolutely they can. But I think the more important goal to be aiming for is always going to be setting up expectations of what people should be looking forward to when they arrive on Sunday morning. This is our part to play as church media people in the effectiveness of ministry that happens on Sunday. And it's one that I am super proud to be able to do every week. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Black Bar. If you haven't already, make sure to check out the Black Bar podcast where we go more into depth into the things that we talked about in these videos. If you're looking to get involved into the ministry of Black Bar, either by helping produce content or by helping other people online, make sure to join our Discord. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.